Hello everyone, I'm Alessandro Pasto, and today I'm going to talk about similarity ranking in graphs. So before we have seen a talk on how to turn non-graph data into a similarity graph. Now we're going to see a different problem, which is given a graph, how do we understand how similar two nodes are in this graph? And how can we use this to solve some problems? And, and this is a very classic problem in uh, machine, machine learning and graph mining, and it has many applications, including link prediction, a recommender system, and collaborative filtering, as well as uh, spam and abuse detection and anomaly detection. But we will see also some other applications that might be less known of sim for similarity ranking, including uh, graph embeddings, clustering, and feature engineering. So uh, uh, this all started at at least in 2004 with the unsupervised approach with included including like, um, methods for analyzing a weighted graph and, and this, defining a similarity score based exclusively on the structure of the graph in terms for, of pairs of nodes in the graph. So the, the first formulation of this problem was given two nodes in this graph, how similar are they and how can I uh, can we analyze their direct connections and their indirect connections in the graph in order to define uh, a good notion of similarity that is useful for underlying tasks like uh, link prediction. Of course, there, are, there, there have been many extensions to this problem, including mining heterogeneous graphs and understanding the structure of the graph, not only in terms of uh, only of, of the topology, but also of the attributes of the graph. But we will see uh, today mostly classical definitions of the problem, including uh, one hop similarity scores like uh, common neighbors and two hop scores or multiple hop scores like personalized page rank. So le let's see uh, uh, some ways of simul defining similarity. One simple one is the number of common neighbors. So for instance, in this case, for the node A and B, there are two common neighbors, so their similarity in this case would be two. Another option is to look at the Jocart coefficient of their neighborhood. So in this case, you, you look at the number of common neighbors over the union of their neighbors. Another option is to weight the neighbors of the node in terms of, of their uh, logarithm or the, their degree. So this, this is done in a dummy Kadar. There are also, all of these similarities are, are based on a single hope. But of course, you can analyze uh, multiple hops in this graph and still define uh, uh, good notions of similarity. And this is what is done in personalized page rank. So the personalized page rank or PPR of a given node V known as the seed is defined as the following uh, stochastic process uh, stationary distribution. So uh, the stochastic process starts in node V and at each step of the random walk with the probability alpha, we jump back to node V and with probability one minus alpha, we visit a uniformly at random neighbor of the current node. Now, this is a stochastic process, but it's possible to, the, to show that there is a unique stationary distribution. And this stationary distribution assigns a score to all nodes in the graph, which is given exactly by the probability of being visited by this random walk starting from V. So this creates a similarity ranking for the node V, and it measures the similarity from V to any other node in the graph. So why are we interested in uh, PPR? One reason is that it's, uh, uh, there is an extensive literature on how to efficiently compute PPR vectors. This started from Andersen, Chang, and Lang in 2007, and there are many applications of this. And also it is known how to compute PPR vectors quite efficiently using distributed and parallel algorithms, including MapReduce style computation. So these uh, tell us that you can, we can use uh, PPR on very large graphs, including gra graphs with billions of edges. And uh, moreover, and one reason for using PPR instead of simple scores like the number of common neighbors is that we can show that actually you can get much better performances. So now I'm going to mention some applications of PPR and similarity ranking in general, and we'll see how this connects with different other uh, se sessions today in graph mining. One application of uh, PPR, uh, a direct application is clustering. So we will see more about graph clustering in the uh, graph clustering session. So if you're interested, please uh, go there. Also, if you have PPR, you can use PPR rankings to speed up the computation in graph neural networks. And this is something that would be shown in a, a talk about a recent paper in, uh, in the graph neural network session. There are also many other applications that we will not cover today. For instance, graph embeddings. Uh, PPR can be used to do efficiently uh, to embed in a graph. Also, it can be used to, to find uh, spam or abuse in a, in a network. And 
uh, other two applications that we will see now are uh, ranking in heterogeneous graphs and social network recommendations or uh, link predictions in social network. So let's see, uh, first of all, rankings in heterogeneous graphs. So what, what does it mean? In this paper, we analyze a graph, where, which is a bipartite graph. And on one side, you have users. On the other side, you have items that for which the users are interested in. And the items belong to different categories or uh, types. So the problem that we want to address is how do you uh, define a similarity score that takes into account the different types of items? And in particular, how can you, in real time, compute a similarity ranking for users in this graph uh, for uh, any subset of the categories of input, of items of interest. And so this is what we uh, study in this paper, and we define uh, efficient algorithms that are able to compute uh, personalized page rank uh, vectors and other similarities in these heterogeneous bipartite graphs. Uh, and, and we show that these, uh, not, not only our algorithms have uh, provable approximation guarantees, but also they provide a good uh, experimental results, including in a real uh, recommendation problem inside AdWords. So if you are interested uh, and you want more details, please uh, contact me or uh, check out our paper. And now I'm going to talk about how to use uh, a similarity ranking to improve uh, friend suggestions or uh, recommendations in a um, social network. This is a, a paper that we published in BLDB in 2016 with other Googlers. So uh, as I said before, uh, one simple way of defining similarity is to look at uh, the direct connections of users in a graph. So one simple way is to look, for instance, at the number of common neighbors. Now, uh, this, however, can be problematic. And I'm showing you in the slide one example where common neighbors can be misleading. So suppose that we count the number of common neighbors between node A and node B. We will see that they, these two nodes are connected by a, a common neighbor, which is the ego node at the center of the graph. So uh, um, more precisely, if you look at this node at the center, which we call the ego, you will see that the ego network of this node contains two, two very well separated communities, one in which A belongs and the other one to which B belongs. So uh, if we cluster this ego network, we identify precisely these two separate communities. So now the question is, should we really recommend to node A, node B? So are node A and node B related to each other? If you think that these two communities are actually disjoint and they represent perhaps, let's say, the family of the ego network in, in one case and the work of the ego network, perhaps this is not really a good suggestion. But common neighbors will say, the just the count of common neighbors will say that these two nodes are related. So uh, what we show in our paper is that by analyzing the clusters of the ego network, we can define a better similarity score. Uh, here in particular, uh, we have defined a similarity score, uh, which takes into account how many times two nodes belong to the same cluster from the point of view of the ego network of common neighbors of these two nodes. So this can be seen as a generalization of the count of common neighbors, where you give a score to the common neighbors depending on the, uh, the clustering structure of the ego network of their common neighbors. So uh, uh, I want to convince you that this is actually something you can compute efficiently, uh, but uh, we, without going into the details, what we have seen is that it actually outperforms other uh, similarity scores, both in an ablation study and also in a live experiment where we show that this reduces a, of, uh, a significant factor the number of rejected suggestions. So if you are interested, please uh, contact us or check our paper. We, uh, we also uh, have a follow-up about this analysis of ego networks, and we will see uh, more details about that in the graph neural network session, where I will talk about how to use uh, ego network structure to embed graphs and improve performances of uh, node embeddings. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I've concluded my discussion about uh, similarity ranking, and if you are interested, please check out our next sessions. Thank you very much.